Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this meeting of the Planning Application Committee. I'm Councillor Gerard Hargreaves, and I'm one of the Vice Chairs of the Committee, and I will be chairing the meeting this evening. Just before we get into the meeting, uh, due to technical reasons, the presentation slides cannot be webcast simultaneously with the recording of the meeting discussion. The presentation slides have, however, been copied on the committee page on the Council's website so that members of the public can look at them at their convenience. And the slides will be presented on the Council Chamber screens and members will be able to see them and, and have hard copies. Thank you. So to my right are my fellow councillors. There will be five of us who will be making the decisions about the cases in front of us this evening. And to the left are the officers who will be presenting the applications uh, and also offering us advice. The officer team tonight is being led by Martin Lomas, acting on behalf of the Director of Planning, sitting immediately to my left. Thank you. So if we look at the agenda, are there any apologies for absence? Thank you very much. Are there any declarations of interest? Are there any other declarations? So we have minutes of the meeting um, of the, of the um, 26th of July. Um, you've seen the minutes. Are, there, uh, are they a record of that meeting? Are you happy for me to sign them as a true record? Thank you very much. So before we start, I'll just go through the order of the agenda this evening. Uh, we have one speaker this evening, and we'll be starting with that case first, and that's Holland Villas Road. We'll then move on to Redcliffe Gardens, the Mercure Hotel, and then uh, Lexham Gardens, Vicarage Gate, Portobello Road, Addison Road, and the final item will be Avondale Primary School in that order. Okay. So if we can start then with our first item on the agenda, which is Holland Villas. Who is presenting? So, Derek, you're going to present Holland Villas, please. Yes, th thank you, Chairman. Um, so the, the, the first application this evening is 23 Holland Villas Road, um, and planning permission is sought for an, an above-ground fish pond in, in the rear garden and then the addition of roof lights to the rear extension. Um, if we could have the first slide, please. Right. So the, the, the first slide I'm showing there is not actually the pond for which planning permission is sought, um, but I thought it was just useful just to give you the flavour of, of um, stuff that's already in the garden. So, um, essentially, that's an, an original fountain that's already in existence with the a pump housing behind it. And you can see that there's a little waterfall um, that you can see sort of roughly to the centre right of the image. So, um, that, that's been in the garden for some time. Um, that's not the subject of the application before you. The application before you um, is, is seen here. So, that this is an image of the rear. If you look right over at the right-hand side, um, you can just see where... The, oh, sorry, next slide, please. Yeah, OK. Um, so uh, on the right-hand side of the image, you can just see the, the fountain that you saw in the first image. The raised, um, sort of glazed pond is at the centre of the image. So if you look in front of the <coughs> um, glass doors but behind the lawn... Um, you'll see there the, the raised pond that's the subject of the application. Next slide, please. And that, that's a closer up image. Oh, if you have the next slide. It's, it's entitled Slide E Pond. If you do forgive us for having to improvise somewhat this evening. Just for, for everyone else's benefit, normally we have a laptop here that's connected to all the screens. 
and so we can see exactly what's being shown and we can go backs and forwards. Um, but there's no connection this evening. Let's give it one more minute, then we'll revert to paper. doing oh, the cameras are working and those are Can members just get the, um, the relevant papers in front of them with the diagrams and maps? One last try and then we're going to carry on with the papers. Callum, are we worth waiting or? Okay, I suggest we carry on with this application, Derek, from the papers, please, um, and whilst we're working on this. <laughs> right. Um, well, I, th I think probably at that point, if I could direct you to, to your packs in front of you, um, oh, as, as usual, but behind the report, um, there are a couple of drawings, and then there are also f photographs. They, they look roughly like, yeah. like this. Yeah. So that these are photographs taken, actually taken by the neighbour, but they'll be quite useful um, just to, so you can see what, what the structure is. So essentially, in, instead of a garden pond being something that's sort of scoop, with soil scooped out and it's recessed down into, into, the, into the, the lawn or the soil, um, this, this is a sort of modern take and that's it's a, a raised glass structure, um, which means you can see the fish through the sides so it sort of enables you to see fish, um, I guess, in, in a way that you wouldn't be able to just looking straight down into, into the top of a, a traditional pond. Um, so planning permission is sought for it. Um, it's recommended for approval on, on the basis that it's, it's a garden structure. Um, it, 
I don't think it's something which should be seen as, you know, as unsuitable for a garden. I mean, there is clearly the sounds of war. So I'm going to pause you there, Doug. I think we've got slides uh, back now. Right. Okay. It's slightly yellowish <laughs> image, but it's an image. Just, yeah. Right. There you go. Okay, so um, the, the slide that you see there is basically show a closer-up image showing the, um, the raised ponds. So you can see there the, the glazed sides that I was describing. Um, and if you can have the next slide, please. Okay, the, the next slide actually is, is the end. So if you just go back to the last slide, we can leave it on that one. Um, so that, that, that's the, the, the structure that you see there in, in the image. Okay, thank you. So I've now like... Phone working? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so I've got many points to make, but only three minutes, so I will focus on three points. The first two points focus on local plan policies CL6 and 9, and the third pertain to policies CL1, 3, and 5. I respectfully disagree with the planning director's report that the roof lights and fish ponds satisfy these local plan policies. According to policy CL6, the council is required to resist small-scale development that harm the character or appearance of the existing building or its setting, or results in a cumulative effect which would be detrimental to the character and appearance of the area. Of particular relevance, CL6 states that although small alterations and additions may have a negligible impact if unsympathetically designed and cited, they may individually harm the appearance of a building or its setting. It is the individual and cumulative effect of these small-scale alterations and additions which can negatively impact and the control is therefore of strategic importance. I urge the Council to consider the cumulative effect of all the changes that 23 Holland Villas Road have made over recent years, including the terrace roof lights, the large start pond, the associated inbuilt outdoor seating area that you can see there next to it, the receipt, recent replacement of the lawn with a concrete layer not shown here because it's so recent, and the construction of a large garden gym. These structures are all unsympathetically designed and they have resulted in a huge reduction in greenery within the garden. This does undeniably harm the character and appearance of the existing building, its setting, and the conservation area in which it is situated. CL9 requires the council to resist proposals for extensions if the detailed design of the addition, including the external materials and finishes, would not be in character with the existing building. CL9 specifically states some modifications to buildings have the potential to cause harm, especially if they are not sensitive to the original character of the building or their cumulative impact detracts from the external appearance of the building. Such details may include changes to windows or glazing patterns. The huge amount of glazing within the extension of this of 23 Holland Villas Road, both in the doors and roof lights of the extension and the glazing of the fish pond, needs to be considered within this context. My third and final point, it is very difficult to see how such a large fish pond that is in its design out of character with a home surrounding it and the roof lights, which cause light pollution at night and create a stark and different effect from neighboring terraces with their beautiful railings and planters, are sympathetic or preserve existing context, character and appearance of the surrounding area as required by CL1, 3, 5 and section 72 of the Planning Listed Buildings and Conservation Areas Act, 1990 as amended. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd now like to ask uh, members of the committee if they have any questions um, of Mary. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, from, from the drawings that we have in front of us, it looks like the uh, proposed fish pond is slightly smaller than what's there currently. Is that your understanding of... Uh, it's not. So I don't know if you know the context, but the original design was submitted in 2019, um, and it wasn't to scale. There were no measurements. Um, that was what was submitted and passed through, along with the terrace, which didn't have roof lights in it, but instead detailed planters and railings, which you can't see because they were never put in, and instead roof lights were put in. Those are the plans um, that um, obviously are not maybe what you're looking at now, but the, approved, the plans submitted for approval now, I'm not clear because whether they're smaller or bigger because I did ask for details of what the measurements are of that pond, but I was never given them. Well, uh, we can take that up with officers. Um, in terms of 
well, you know, I, I, I can't help but agree looking at the photos that the, the, they've made the back of the building pretty ugly, but it's not to do with the application. In terms of what you're looking for, you know, if this were to be approved, um, the sort of conditions that, that might minimize some of the issues that you're asking for, what, what, if you had a wish list, as it were, <laughs> what would that be? Uh, well, I think on terms of the roof lights, reduction, removal of the roof lights, which you can't really see in this particular these photos, but they're um, on, the, on the terrace, and the introduction of railings that are suitable to the, consistent with the railings that our next door neighbours neighbors have on both sides, and the planters, which would add some greenery. And the outdoor seating area next to that pond, and together with the pond, um, obviously detracts from the green space that's there, especially since that lawn is now gone because it's got a concrete basketball, basketball court on it. So uh, more greenery is the answer, which would either mean making that fish pond in the seating area smaller or um, eliminating it altogether. Oh. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering, so I'm looking at the, uh, the response to your um, concerns about the roof lights, which you just mentioned. Yeah. Um, I mean, has that been measured? Obviously, the response, it, which I'm assuming you disagree with, is that it's not, gonna, it, it, it's not substantively different to, to just outdoor lighting that's already there. Um, yeah. uh, I mean, I'm assuming you disagree with it, and I'd like to know, um, you know, why? Like, what's the basis of that? Has it been measured, or you know, would you, or, or you know, has anyone mentioned, put forward the idea of measuring this in, in some way so we can actually have some something solid? Uh, no, it hasn't been put forward, and it hasn't been measured by myself or my client. But my client um, is is the one distressed by it because it has in, increased the amount of light um, at night. Um, maybe it's the way it comes up rather than out through the windows. Maybe because it comes up but it's something that affects them when they're in their garden in the evening. Well, it's actually in use now, the roof lights. They are. Yeah, yeah. So this is all retrospective planning yeah. permission that's been approved, yeah, yeah, applied yeah. for, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, have you, um, have the, um, uh, the applicant consulted with, with the neighbors? And have you had any discussions about this application prior to? to got with, a, with, to with the, yes, the owners with the of 23 Holland Village Road. Um, they have discussed the pond with them, is my understanding. Um, but I don't think the roof lights. But they didn't know, obviously, that we were objecting to them because they were put in without permission being, um, sub being submitted. Um, but, and so we then objected to them. But then there is a consultation period whereby uh, applicants consult their neighbours or just put put. The, so have you, have they been approached even? Uh, no, because I think because of this, because again it's retrospective. It's a, the initial planning application. Yeah. The net, my client had no problem with because it didn't show a pond like that, okay. and it also didn't show any roof lights. It showed railings and planters and a very different look, okay. which is much more consistent with the neighbouring properties. So they applied for something showed it to the resident to the neighbors and went ahead and did something different that's right yes thank you which they're obviously now seeking approval for uh, good evening um, there's a there's a comment about um, the noise of the running water yeah. um, is, is it uh, is it constant or do we know or does it just go on Sometimes I think that's a constant running for the sort of waterfall effect, and then there's the bubbling. Sometimes the fish pond bubbles, but that's not constant, is my understanding. Thank you. Um, just, um, just if we could get some clarification, um, um, is my understanding correct that what, what, what is being proposed is a slightly smaller pond than what exists already from the drawings? Um, no, no, I think it's the opposite. I mean, basically, but what you see before you um, is what planning permission is being sought for. 
So that there are two, two aspects to it, the, the, the ponds and then the, the roof lights above the rear extension. We can only judge on what's in front of us in this planning application. Councillor Benton. Thank you. Um, um, yeah, I, it's, um, it's, it's a question. Is the, my, my question is how, um, just in terms of the uh, actual guidance, how do we think about um, the character of an area because it, it's thrown around a lot obviously but it's 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 quite it can be quite subjective as to what y you know what that means in a case like this like obviously the, the recommendation is to um, to approve um, and I just want to you know I want to know what we need to be um, actually bringing to um, to this assessment of what actually is and isn't in character because you know because I have my preferences but I'm not really and that's not what I'm going to make, base my decision on. So can you maybe just clarify that a little bit in this context? Because it does seem a little bit sort of wafty to me. Um, well, well I, th I think essentially there's, there's probably two, two le levels of thought that are needed there. What, one is whether the pond would harm the appearance of the building. Um, and on that one, as you can see from, from the image um, in front of you at the moment, I mean that the building has been altered in a modern way. Um, as you saw from the first slide, the garden has been landscaped in a modern way. Um, and the, the appearance of the, of the glazed ponds would actually be completely compatible with the, the modern theme of the alterations that have already taken place uh, at the rear. But the second level to think of it um, is a bit beyond just the impact on the appearance of the property, um, is the character and the appearance of the conservation area. Um, but then, I mean, you, you can sort of guess immediately that the, the character and the appearance of the conservation area are not particularly relying on the, the lower parts of the rear elevation or, or the garden of, of this property. Um, the alterations have already taken place here over, over a period of time, long before this pond went in. Um, and I think the prevailing character and appearance of the, of the conservation area would be preserved with or without this pond. I don't think it really impacts on the prevailing character of the area. Here. Um, my question is, uh, did, did, did the applicant um, present a different application um, for <coughs> consultation and then build something different, or that was totally a different <coughs> scenario to start with, and they built, they did this, and now they want, uh, a, you know, permission to... I think that's pretty much what what's happened. I mean, obviously, that the, the, there's been early, there's been earlier planning permission showing a smaller pond. Um, <coughs> that they, they've built this one, so, so that, that's why the, that's why the application is, is before us. Um, I mean, it's you know, it, in its own right, it probably wouldn't require planning permission, but as okay. it's a variation to an earlier permission, okay. the, the application is before us. All right. Thank you. Um, question to officers about about um, the noise of running water. I would, my my instinct would be to consider it a feature of the area with these large gardens and and uh, they would be very peaceful and quiet. We do have um, uh, an issue raised with the noise of constant running water. Um, um, uh, in all the cases I have seen uh, over, over over the years. Um, where people have a pond, it's just stationary, but the fact that there is a, sort of a <coughs> waterfall effect may cause harm, and I, th I just wanted to see whether, whether harm caused by, by constant noise in an otherwise vi very quiet area would be considered a, a harmful impact on uh, residents' amenity. Um, well, I think it, it's, it's an interesting question because, I mean, clearly that the sound of running water to one person might be a very pleasant sound and then to another person might, might be an irritant. Um, that, you know, that, that, that would be immediately clear. I think the, the problem for, for town planning, the problem for a planning authority, is that there are no planning policies that deal with the sound of running water. So there's no policy really to assess that against. Noise comes into policy CL5, um, but I think it's fair to say policy CL5 wasn't considering garden fountains or other water features in terms of noise. I mean, really, noise for CL5 comes from people rather than fountains. 
Um, so there isn't really a planning policy that directly relates to that. Um, there are, of course, environmental health controls over noise. Don't, I don't quite know where fountains or waterfalls would fall into the Environmental Protection Act controls. My, my guess is that they'd fall underneath the controls that, that are sort of you know, possible through the Environmental Protection Act. I mean, so that the ultimate answer is that there really isn't much policy or control relating to garden features such as this. But perhaps there's a reason for that, which is that they are relatively small scale de development. A lot of the time they wouldn't even be development requiring planning permission. And that's probably why we find policies don't really go down to that, to that level. Any other questions for Mr. Weed and Sands? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just, Mr. Taylor, obviously you heard the, um, the, the objections request, as it were, to, uh, you know, if, we could, if there's a way of know, perhaps shrouding partially the lights and, and getting some railings or greenery. Is that something we can put a condition on to um, surround the top of that roof area or even just greening on the pond? It's a bit difficult to A, see how that would really achieve its objective. Um, and B, I mean, in, in a way, it, it's a similar, the, the light from the roof lights is a similar sort of issue in a way to sound from flowing water, which is that there is no planning policy that deals with light emissions from roof lights or, or windows. Um, I mean, it's, I mean, planning permission isn't required to illuminate a garden. So the garden could be could have lots of light fittings in it, illuminating the garden 24/7, and that wouldn't require planning permission, even if it was quite irritating. Um, that, funnily enough, there there is actually a proposed policy in the proposed amendments to the local plan um, that deals with light. So you know, it may be in a year's time or something that there could be a policy addr addressing light light spillage or light emission, but there isn't at the moment. And I, I appreciate that's not finalised, but if one were to attach a tiny bit of weight to the draft local plan, as it were, what sort of outcome would you start to see, for, for example, if it, were, if it were to follow that policy? To be honest, I wouldn't wish to predict the outcome on that. Um, clearly, <coughs> you can imagine there'll be a range of views as to, as to what sort of control the, the planning system should have over people's garden lighting. Um, that brings in all sorts of questions, and tonight isn't the time to debate those. But I mean, I think the, the in terms of introducing planting or planters to somehow shield or screen the light, I, I don't think it would make much difference because the, there are windows all the way across the rear elevation. Then anyway, they could all emit light. Okay, so um, we've had a chance now. We've heard from the directors. We've heard from officers. Uh, we now need to make a decision. The recommendation the committee grants planning commission with conditions listed in section eight of this report. Committee, how do you wish to uh, proceed with this? Those in favor of granting, please raise your hands. Those against granting, please raise your hands. Are there any abstentions? Okay, I'm in favour of granting, so this application is granted. Thank you. We now move on to agenda item number two, flat A28, Redcliffe Gardens. And Jonathan, you're going to introduce this. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this is a planning application in flat A28, Redcliffe Gardens. <coughs> Um, the proposal is to demolish the existing pergola structure to be replaced with a rear garden outbuilding. Could we have the next slide, please? So this is a site location plan showing where the site is. The red line boundary outlines the actual property. The property itself is a ground floor flat, and the um, outbuilding will be, on, will be at the rear garden. Could you have the next slide, please? So this shows the existing site plan of the, um, of the site. So the existing structure would be approximately 2.3 meters in height, and it's positioned just, in f just next to the um, rear wall of the, of the garden. Could we have the next slide, please? 
And this shows the, the, the elevations of the existing um, pergola structure in relation to the um, block of flats that the site is. Can we have the next slide, please? And this is the proposed site plan. As you can see, the um, proposed outbuilding would be, um, would be bigger than the existing structure. It will, have a, it will be used as a, guard, a garden office, and there will be a canopy area as well as two roof lights. Could we have the next slide, please? And this is the proposed plans and elevations of the outbuilding. Now, it does occupy almost the full width of the rear garden, but officers have looked into the planning history of nearby properties, and there are outbuildings in that particular um, part of um, Redcliffe Gardens. Could we have the next slide, please? So with, this is to um, assist with the context of the site. The red outline shows the application site, and although it is quite vegetated and the trees are covering a majority of the rear gardens, but um, towards the northwest of the site, at number 34, there is actually an outbuilding that was granted permission um, previously, and therefore there is already a precedent set for, uh, for outbuildings for properties in this area. Could we have the next slide, please? So here is a photo which shows the existing pergola structure. It is obviously um, standing next to the um, rear wall. And can we have the next slide, please? And this is a wider view of the rear garden, which shows um, there is some vegetation and there is a, tr uh, a Japanese made tree to the left of the image, but the image the tree would be retained, and although there would be some bushes that has to be removed to accommodate the outbuilding, the, the bushes to be removed will have a limited value, amenity value to the conservation area, and officers think that it would be acceptable for the outbuilding to be, to be uh, positioned and within that part of the rear garden. And this and that would be the end of the presentation slide. Um, there is an additional objection that was um, received before, um, before the, after the, the officer's report has been published as st set out in the addendum, which, would which has requested um, a condition to ensure the outbuilding to remain in ancillary use if the application were to be granted. Um, this is obviously up to the members for deba to, to debate whether this condition is deemed necessary. Thank you very much. We don't have any uh, speakers on this, so members, would you like to ask any questions, please? Any questions from members? Councillor Reading Sands? Just a very quick one, Mr. Chairman. Um, in terms of the greenery, I note that there's a condition to ensure that there's no removal of any trees. Um, what, what, that looks rather, it does look, from the photo, it looks rather, over, you know, like there's a lot of greenery there. What exactly is, 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 are we going to be losing? So, um, I, I believe it would be the bushes to, to next to the rear wall. Um, in terms of the, I the image on here, the tree that is in front of the pergola structure would be staying as that would not be positioned near to the outbuilding. <coughs> I, it is because of the perspective of the picture that the tree, this, the tree would appear to be very close to it, but that is not the case. The Japanese maple tree as shown on the um, site plan um, in... Uh, in the previous slides would be retained. So if we go back to the proposed site plan uh, approximately four to five slides before, that tree would be the Japanese maple tree that would be retained, and there will be no other trees that would be removed as part of the development. Ms. Redvis. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, do we know what um, 
what is the um, structure going to be? Uh, it, says it's, it says it's going to be an office, but what kind of business are they conducting? Um, Do you know? Uh, thank, thank you. <coughs> um, this outbuilding would be used solely as sort of uh, ancillary to the residential use. So what we mean by that is it will be just used as a home office rather than a separate um, professional or business use. It will retain as the same use as the existing um, property on site, which is a residential use. There will not be a change of use with regards to, to, to the site. So, so um, res and the neighbors shouldn't worry about noise, about um, clients walking in and out, um, about all that? That is correct. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I'm uh, coughing very badly tonight. Um, Councillor Benton. Thanks. Um, uh, just, a, just some clarification about the, um, the condition regarding SUDS. Um, uh, quite um, well. F f I'm just, I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I'm worried about how, in, uh, you know, how, how it's enforced and how to be really, really sure that, you know, it's uh, everything um, regarding the sides is approved before anything goes forward. Because so the condition is no development should commence until etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and I'm, I just want to make sure that there's a lot of weight put on that because that's sort of the one thing that the, the thing that really jumps out at me probably more than the even the trees well if the application were to be approved and this condition forms part of the decision notice we would expect um, applicants to provide details of sustainable drainage strategy in other words such prior to the commencement of works and that would be expected from the applicant to to, to provide the details and we, they have to discharge it with the council before any works can take place. If this hasn't taken place, the applicant is obviously liable to um, a, a planning enforcement investigation and ultimately um, enforcement action if they have not um, provided details as stipulated by the um, condition on the decision notice if this is granted. So it, it will be enforceable by the council. Thank you. Any other questions from members? Okay, so we now need to make a decision. Um, the recommendation to the committee is to grant planning permission with the conditions listed in section nine of this report. All those in favor, please raise their hand. All those against, please raise their hand. Abstentions? Okay, and I uh, raise my hand in favour. So that is granted. Thank you very much indeed. We now moved on to the Mercure London Kensington application, which Derek, I think you're going to present, aren't you? Um, yes, thank you, Chairman. All right, so um, there are two applications relating to the Mercure Hotel um, in Lexham Gardens. So the, first of all, I'll introduce um, this one. The first one before you this evening is for a change of use from a hotel um, to a healthcare facility. So basically it'd be changing from East Class C1 as a hotel to a healthcare facility within Class E, um, which basically involves obviously internal alterations that don't require planning permission and then there'd be a number of external alterations that do require planning permission. Um, and the, the first slide there, if, if you can advance, to the, yep, thank you. Um, the, the first slide is, is showing the hotel um, on the corner of Cromwell Road and, and Lexham Gardens. And you can see there the sort of typical buildings of Lexham Gardens at the right-hand side of the image. And then at the left-hand side of the image, you can see the Cromwell Hospital, um, which obviously fronts onto Cromwell Road. So if you sort of keep the existing um, hotel image in, in your minds, um, that, that's another existing shot, this t taken sort of almost in the opposite direction. So that's looking sort of roughly south from Lexham Gardens down towards um, the Cromwell Road with the application building um, on the right-hand side. Um, if you, I'm hoping you can see the detail from where you're sitting, but essentially 
all the items in red on, on that drawing, if you can see them. Um, as usual, with, with drawings where you see red, that, that indicates parts of the building to be demolished. And you can see there that actually most of the structure of the building would be retained, but they are proposing to um, demolish the windows um, that you saw on the front elevation, and then also the lower parts of the ground floor. So um, the demolition is, is, is not, not extensive. Um, if you go to the next slide, that's the front elevation of the building, and you can see there the parts of the lower parts of the elevation that would be demolished, um, plus the windows would be taken out and, and renewed at the upper levels. Um, next slide, please. And then that's the proposed elevation. So you can see there the, the ground floor has been tidied up a bit. There are new windows now um, in the upper parts of, of the building, as, as proposed. N next slide, please. And that, that's a, a montage to show the, the, um, the alterations at the front ground floor level and then the, the new windows above. And I think that was the last slide. So that's the end of the presentation, Chair. Thank you. Again, we've no speakers, so members, any questions, please? Um, thank you. Um, just um, looking at some of the details in here, there's the um, necessary associated infrastructure improvements um, um, should the application be granted that will form um, part of the 106. And I see that it has been uh, decided that the contributions for air quality, parks and sports and leisure um, are, not, are not being claimed. So the first question to offices are, um, was this the applicant saying that they wouldn't pay them, or was this some other process that, uh, that went on? Um, right, so the, you're referring to section seven of the report that sets out um, the section 106 agreements and associated payments. No, the, this wasn't really the, the applicant's volition at all. Um, I think what you see before you is, is the recommendation of, of officers. Why okay. have the officers come to the conclusions that we have? Essentially, Ju just with conditions, where a condition has to be necessary to make something acceptable in planning terms, very, very similar tests apply to Section 106. So there, there will be situations such as this, where the, the calculator will, will produce figures, um, but officers, or indeed the planning authority, yourselves this evening, um, you've got to ask yourselves what is necessary to make the development acceptable and what okay, might so, not So be. Just, on, just on that, in 6.21, um, 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 the Director of Environmental Health requires further information on air quality, and that is conditioned at 11. But we don't know what that further information uh, reports are going to, are going to say. Um, one of the things that I have a view of living, living uh, you know, close to Cromwell Road and looking at how hotels operate is that hotels tend to have um, clients who arrive by public transport and stay for a few days or for a week or for longer, whereas um, health facilities um, have clients, maybe because they're not terribly well, who will arrive for a short appointment but, um, but generate a lot more car traffic. And so uh, I would, I'm looking at this and saying there are uh, a number of things that, that I would be uh, uncomfortable in um, uh, voting to grant uh, this application um, because the issues have, uh, have not been bottomed out and the amount of extra activity that's being created by the hospital impact on the environment and <coughs> the local residents suggests to me that I would feel it would be justified, and it sounds like the applicant hasn't um, you know, demanded that these levies don't apply um, for, for the contributions to be made. Mm -hmm. And if I'm, if I'm right, the way that a 106 would work is that if the planning authority, which um, for tonight's purposes is, is uh, the councillors on the planning committee, chose to insert those items back into the 106, then that would be a legitimate way in which the process could sort of come back, go back to the applicant, because the applicant then has to sign the 106 within 
whatever number of weeks or months it is. So is that something that, uh, that if, you know, if I was proposing it for myself, is that something that I could say I would like to propose those, those contributions go back in? Um, right, well, I think to two, two aspects perhaps for me to um, comment on there. Firstly, the mechanics of it, which was really the last bit, and then b before that, the, um, the, the justifications for it. In, in terms of the mechanics, yes, of course, it's completely within your gift as, as the planning committee to attach conditions that you see necessary or... Um, you, you can attach requirements in, in terms of the 106 that, that you'd, you would see necessary. So as long as you are satisfied that, that the relevant tests were, were, were met, then that's obviously within your gift. Um, I mean, in, in terms of the justification for it, I, I think sort of par parks and gardens and, and so on are unlikely to be put under much pressure by, by ho hospital um, sort of patients or even the staff, so that that's a relatively easy one perhaps to consider. Air quality is more difficult. Clearly there would be um, you know, a lot of activity associated with it. Um, the applicants have taken that into account in, in their air quality report that there are various air quality mitigation measures um, that they have submitted. And our own environmental health officers actually consider that there wouldn't be any significant air quality impact. Um, and that really that led to the planning officer recommendation that you have before you. Um, condition 11 is, is to do with air quality, but it's actually to do with the construction work. It's, it's not really to do with the overall air quality impacts of, of a development. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's, that's the officer's reasoning, um, basically based upon our own environmental health officer's advice that the the mitigation measures within it would be un, you know, would, would be sat would be satisfying satisfactory in limiting air quality impact. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the committee? So, sorry, uh, yeah, sorry, thank you, Chair. Can we still ask for it uh, anyway? If we if we want to. If we uh, 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 does it have to be in a condition or how, how can we go about it? If you want to ask for it. Well, essentially, you, you have to consider the advice that um, planning officers are giving you in the report. Um, obviously, c conditions 11 and 12 deal with air quality in one way or another. Um, you, you have to ask yourselves, I suppose, whether you think that's sufficient or whether an air quality payment would be, would be justified. Thank you. Any other, yes. just, a, just a very quick one, really, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, in terms of biodiversity, given that they're, they're demolishing the windows and parts of the wall, the, uh, the exterior, is there any chance of sort of putting a condition on asking for some swift boxes? on the exterior to try and improve the um, biodiversity of the site? I mean, that, that through you, Chairman, I mean, that they're including plants at the ground floor level um, where they could be maintained. I'm not sure there's really any other space on the building to do that. No, I, I said swift boxes. So they go in, they go in the wall. The and it's just a, a little box where swifts, which are being, have, you know, endangered species, can come and rest. So a lot of other planning authorities have started requesting swift boxes on designs, particularly buildings of this sort of height, um, because well, of the way constructions has gone. It, it's prevented uh, the, the previous. They used to rest in you know attics and eaves, um, and modern developments have, have sort of removed them or closed them off. Um, and swift boxes are a way to provide that habitat right. uh, to an endangered species like swifts. Well, as as you'll see in the next application, that there is a plant room structure on the roof and there's an area of flat roof, I'm sure they could provide swift boxes up there. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. sure that could be done. <coughs> Are there any other questions on this application? So, Councillor um, Macover, what do you want to do about your thoughts on the 106? Uh, um, I, th I, I, I understand from what uh, uh, officers are saying um, um, that 
as a committee, I could, as a member, propose um, that the sums required under the SPD uh, are, in fact, added back into uh, the, the 106. And I would want that, and my justification for wanting it is that um, there are um, uh, a range of, of impacts from the increased use of the site, um, which I can't see uh, detailed evidence being provided to say that it, that isn't going to um, um, create more demands on uh, air quality and on the environment and on uh, all those other impacts. And so I think that the SPD was, was um, only recently, uh, you know, September 2019, put in place, and I don't see why those terms shouldn't apply, and I understand from what officers have said that uh, the applicant um, um, has not um, objected to them being included, and I would therefore respectfully ask them to be added back into the, the 106, which is obviously then put to the client for, uh, applicant for signing anyway. We're just checking with the legal officers how we proceed with that. Okay, so the, the, the advice from legal team is that we vote on the application that we have in front of us and then we see how that goes before we we proceed so you have a recommendation before you <coughs> you have a recommendation before you obviously obviously without changing it yes yes yeah so those in favor of the recommendation to grant planning permission on the satisfactory completion of an undertaking and point two there, to refuse planning permission of undertaking the agreement to secure the contribution has not been satisfactorily completed by the 28th of February 2023. So those in favour of this recommendation, please raise your hands, please. Those against this recommendation, please raise your hand. And I would vote against it, so that's um, this. What happens now is that we have to propose an alternative. So, Councillor um, McIver, would you like to propose an alternative which has to be seconded and then voted on? Um, yes, my, my is, is, is just to um, amend the um, um, amend or uh, amend the wording of the of the recommendation uh, to grant uh, on the basis that it includes the amounts required by the SPD, which are listed in seven point. Two, um, along with noting that the carbon footprint is already included, and those, so those those matters should be added back into the 106, which then needs to be signed for permission to take effect. Is that just the air quality contribution you want included? All, yeah, all of them. All of them. Yeah, so okay. sport, sports, just so I can read. Yeah, sports and leisure, park and open spaces, and air quality. Okay, can we and the carbon footprint obviously is still included. Yeah. Okay. Can we just check with the legal team that that is sufficient? To what you do? Can we have a seconder to that, please? Councillor Weedon Sands. Those in favour of that proposal, including uh, be included in this, raise their hands, please. In favour. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm in favour. So that has passed, and that is added on to the recommendations. Thank you. So let's move on to the next stage. Uh, Derek, you're going to present that. Um, if we could have the next slide, please. Yeah. Okay. And the next slide, please. Right, so the, the se second application for the Mercure um, re relates to the, the, the top part of the hotel, the roof, um, hence the first image that you can see there, which shows the ex existing sort of upper level of the hotel, which, which is, is clearly in, in the main plant enclosure or a plant level. Um, 
just very briefly in terms of swift boxes, um, you can see that there would be spaces up there where swift boxes could be included. Um, so just following up on, on that, um, if, if you wanted to, you could recommend a condition um, requiring the placement of swift, swift boxes in suitable positions on, on the roof. Um, so I think those options would, would be there. Um, the, the application before you is basically to, to renew the plant for the hotel, to, to renew the rooftop equipment and to also add some new equipment um, to the rear at the lower level. If you have the next slide, please. And the, that, that's, that's the image that shows you the amount of um, demolition that would take place to the existing rooftop structure. So basically what you saw on top of the roof would, would be removed. Um, and that shows in elevation the existing plant level that would be removed, hence the red colouring. Um, and if you can move to the next image, then you can see... So one more image, sorry. And then you, you can see in, in the grey, that's the new plant enclosure at the, at the roof. Um, you, you may have picked up from the addendum report that, that there's actually now a further condition recommended which is that um, before the new, the new roof plant should be installed, the colour for the exterior of it, in, including the, the grills that you see there in the image, um, should be confirmed first and, and approved in writing. It, it is actually mentioned in, in the application supporting documents that a, a light grey would be used for, for the grills and for the, for the, the plant structure. Um, but obviously light grey could mean different things. It's a little subjective. So... Um, hence the condition to actually ensure that an appropriate light, light grey is, is used. Um, and next slide, please. That, and that's a, a closer up image, um, just showing how the um, sort of plant structure is set back um, from the front of the building. And the next slide, please. Um, and that shows the position of new, new plants and equipment that would go at the rear of the building. Um, you, you might have seen in the very first slides that the Cromwell Hospital has a lot of plants and equipment at the rear anyway. Um, and then to bring this building into use would necessitate some new equipment, as you see there in that section. And the next slide, please. And then, you, you, if you can see that image, um, that the mercure is at the centre of the photograph. And you can see that there's an area of flat roof at the lower level, um, at, at the bottom of the elevation, um, which sort of faces onto the existing an ancillary yard behind the Cromwell Hospital. And that's the position where the plant would go that you saw in, in the last section. Um, I'm afraid I don't have a mouse that I can use to the cursor to indicate it, but you can see the flat roof sort of in, at the top end of the service yard, um, immediately at the bottom of the ele elevation of the hotel. Um, and that's the last slide. Thank you again with no speakers. So any questions, uh, Councillor Idris? Chair, um, with, uh, are we going to do any biodiversity? Um, planting in the roof. I think we should uh, and connect it to our uh, world-renowned B superhighway. Yeah. Um, well, I, I was suggesting that as a condition requiring details of swift boxes could be added. Um, the danger going much beyond that is, I mean, as the roof is clearly a... Yeah. a a plant and an equipment and working area. Yeah, yeah. We, I'm, I'm not, I'm not thinking I'm not sure. of, uh, about you know having a sycamore or an oak or anything serious <laughs> like that. I'm mm. thinking more along the lines of just having pollinator-friendly shrubs, small, lovely, cute little shrubs in pots, uh, that type of thing, uh, whereby we can connect to the rest of the corridors. It's difficult. I mean, off the top of my head, I'd suggest that probably could be done. But I mean, what, what I'm not professionally qualified to say is whether being close to all, all the air conditioning equipment and venting that would take place at the roof. I just don't know if it's a suitable place. I suggest we stick with the swift boxes on, on this one, if we may. I have a 
interesting about the SWIFT boxes is they don't actually exist in the, in, in the, at the top, uh, in the rooftop. They're actually on the building, on the body of the building at the very top. As opposed, am I correct in thinking so? Yeah. So, so that it's two different things. Those boxes are, are totally different. They are they're just um, in the wall as opposed to in the roof. But the pollinator boxes or the pollinator pots, it's it's more of a planter. You can put at the top of your, of the roof, and 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 it doesn't have to be a huge amount of them. Just enough for bees to have a pit stop and pollinators. Can we build in a condition that, 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 that takes into consideration the, the, the biodiversity issues that might include a swift box and might include the, the bees and make it general uh, as applicable to this building? I think, Chairman, that's probably what I was thinking as well, that the danger here would be if we were too specific, <coughs> yeah. they yeah. may not be able yeah. to comply with the condition. But if there was a, a condition requiring details to be submitted of biodiversity measures, for example, um, pollinator boxes or swift boxes, that would enable them to do a bit of research and find out what they could you know, reasonably fit in. So the quitting agreement, I think that's the way we, we go on that one. Thank you. Any other questions to the officers on this application? In which case then, uh, we need to make a decision. It is recommended to the committee, authorises the director of Planning and place, grant planning permission. Um. Could, Chairman, could we just hear what the extra condition would, how it would be worded on, in, on, on. You're asking uh, them to do yeah. it on the hoof, okay? Yeah. Um. Just, to, just to hear, so we know what we're voting on. Just the rough idea. Yeah. It, it would be um, that details should be submitted of biodiversity measures, for example, swift boxes, and/or po pollinator, you know. Um, and, and that will make it easy if, for them to have it on the rooftop or somewhere else. Yeah, it, it, it would put the onus on <coughs> the applicant. I mean, if they, you know, if they couldn't do it for some technical yeah, reason, yeah. then they could explain yeah. why not. Absolutely. Um, but they, it puts the onus on them to do what they can. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for raising that. So those in favour of the recommendation, raise their hands, please. And I'm in favour, so that's uh, everybody in favour. And that is passed. Thank you very much. Can we now move on to 7B Vicarage Gate? Again, Derek, you're going to present this, aren't you? Yeah, if we could have the next slide, please. Should we just two seconds while the gentlemen leave and then we... we Actually, can I just suggest we have a five-minute break while I, I try and deal with my coughing, and uh, we'll be back in five minutes. Thank you.
Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we're back together again now, so can we please proceed with 7B, Vicarage Gate? Thank you. Um, and then the, the next slide shows the proposed plan. So you can see now that the, the garden has been l landscaped and then in the centre of the image you can see the footprint of the proposed extension which is basically in the same place as the um, conservatory pretty much. And that's an existing section so you can see the sloping roof of the, of the conservatory in front of the steps. Um, towards the left of left centre of the image, and then the, the next slide, please, is a section through the, the proposed extension. Um, so you can see it's in the same position. It's simply squared off now with, with a flat roof. And if you can have the next slide, please. That towards the right-hand side of that slide, you can see the glazed sloping roof of the existing extension. And you can also see very prominently in, in the photograph that, that the tree um, that some of the objectors have, have drawn concern relating to. Um, our, our own arboriculturists are actually satisfied that rebuilding the conservatory, building the extension, would not actually be harmful to the tree. The tree is in the neighbouring garden. Um, but, but they've had a good look at it. And if you could have the next slide, please. That, that just shows um, the existing conservatory again from a different angle. And you can see there the tree in, in leaf this time in the neighbouring garden. And that was the last... Oh, sorry, there's one more slide, I beg your pardon, um, which is just a closer-up image of, of the conservatory. And you can just see the tree to the right of it. And that's the last slide. Thank you again. No speakers. So any questions from the committee, please? Councillor Idris. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm concerned about the tree, and I get the feeling um, we haven't really, uh, even though we had an Arabu culturist uh, report, we haven't really considered its future very seriously. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Um, well, yes. I mean, the, essentially, our arboriculturists, in view of the objections, we asked them to, to look at that very carefully. I'm sure they would have done anyway. Um, but they're satisfied that, the, that the, basically rebuilding the conservatory with a single-storey rear extension in, in that position um, is sufficiently distanced fr from the tree. They, they don't anticipate any, any, any difficulties with doing that. Even the, even the process of building and demolishing and building will not affect because sometimes we talk about building, but then before we get to the building, we have to demolish a lot. And, and, and will that affect the tree in any way? I mean, I'm, I just feel it is too close. Uh, it is not their tree, so maybe they're not as attached to it as the neighbors, but a tree is a tree. Yeah, I mean, they, as I say, they, they looked at it very closely. Um, the, removing the existing conservatory, it's a completely lightweight structure. I mean, that, that wouldn't harm the, the tree in the slightest. The construction of a more solid rear extension, um, obviously that would have to have foundations, but mm -hmm. the, the distances away from the tree, I mean, if you, you can see it in that image, it's not actually that close to the tree. Um, and even the single-storey rear extension is, is not a big structure in, in foundation terms. And so the, I mean, the, the, the tree officers are satisfied there would be no harm to the tree. So we don't need to do any extra anything to protect the tree, do we? No. Okay. no Thank you. Don't. Any more questions in that case? Uh, Sorry, th thank you. Uh, just very 
real just clarification, you really did just say it, but I, I <laughs> but the arboricultural officer um, um, had this concern and we changed the proposal um, in paragraph 6.7, 6.8. Um, has, the, has that officer actually, um, and I understand it's in compliance now, but has the officer actually explicitly signed off on that yet? Because I can't find that part. Y yes, that, that they have. Um, I mean, at one point that they were proposing to excavate the garden itself so that, that this part of it was not to do with the rebuilding of the extension, it was whether they could actually change the levels in the garden. And the, the advice of the arboriculturists was that well, once you actually start to excavate in the garden and change the levels, that could have an impact on the trees, so that they dropped that part of it. Thank you. Thank you. So can we go to a vote, please? It is recommended that the committee grant planning permission with the conditions listed in section eight of this report. All those in favor, raise your hands, please. Anybody against? No, everybody's, that's all in favor. Thank you. So that permission is granted. Can we move now to 177 Portobello Road? Um, I think you're on again, aren't you, Derek? Um, yep, I think all, all the remaining ones. All the remaining ones, yes. Yeah. Um, so if we could have the first slide. <coughs> yep, sorry, it's up. So uh, essentially, that this is a corner property um, at the corner of Elgin Crescent and Portobello Road. And in the first photograph, you, you see the existing El Elgin Crescent elevation. Um, the application before you is basically to fit a new shop front on, on both sides. Um, so if we could have the next slide, please. Um, the slide that you're, you're looking at now, that's the proposed shop front um, for the Elgin Crescent side. And then if we can have the next slide, please. That should show the um, existing frontage to Porcibello Road. So, so these premises were called the Porcibello Market. In, in the last guys. Um, and the next slide, please, shows the Portobello Road frontage. So I think we probably all agree that's quite an improvement um, on, on the existing in, in visual terms. The, there is one slightly unusual part, aspect to the application, which if we can have the next slide, please. Um, if you look at the floor plan that as I'm showing there, um, in the bottom left, you'll see that the, there's actually a bench on the outside of the shop front. So the, uh, adjacent to the stairs that you see in the image, that there's a, there's a bench on the outside. Um, that there's actually a condition recommended, which is condition um, number three, but which is basically um, requiring the bench to be folded up when, when the premises are not in use. That would just stop people sitting on us at the odd times of the night. Um, but as long as the bench was in the folded position when the premises weren't in use, um, then that, that condition would be complied with. Thank you. There are no speakers, so questions from the committee. Councillor Idris. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I, c I can see there is another planning application there. Uh, are they... Uh, so what's the difference between the, the planning application we granted before and this one, and the one they're asking for now? Um, for Porcibella Road? Yeah. Power 4, 3. Sorry, which paragraph? Well, presumably you're talking about the previous planning permissions, are you? Yeah, uh, he, they got... Um, they got previous planning permissions, and and nothing. And nothing I don't. Nothing happened. But uh, I, I just wanted to know what's the difference between what was granted and what they are asking f and what they they want us to grant now. Um, well, I mean, the, the last planning permission, according to the history, was 2012. Sorry, 2012. Yeah. Go, just uh, I think there's some confusion, Councillor Idris. Sorry. No, I have a confusion, no, 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 but no, no. No, the same point, maybe the same point, because it says yes. um, in 6.1, refused application Isn't 19. Is yeah, yeah. That's, that, was, that was in yeah. 12. That was 20. That so was what's, 20. what's in, in 6.1, what's, what's, what's that referring to? Yeah. I think that might actually be a, be a typo. 
Yes, there, there is no 19235 set, set out in the history. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I think just to reiterate what Derek says, I, th I think that's a mistake. Looking at the application referred to, it, it's not actually an application at, at this property. Um, so, um, uh, and it's not a press. It's not a case of anything like this in terms of shop front or anything else. That's what we were just checking. It was referred to, and then we obviously started thinking about it. Um, so, is it, is, does it have any bearing on this? Because if, it's, if something is a material consideration, yeah. we just want to understand what it's, what it's talking about. Um, perhaps you can you can leave me just to to look into that, and maybe if you've got any additional questions, and then I'll come back to that because it'll just take me some time to check. Uh, thank you. Um, I think it's a mistake. Yeah, so, um, so looking through it, um, I don't, I think I'm just not grasping why is, um, why is details on surface water runoff and suds, why is that not necessary in this instance? I don't understand. Sorry. <laughs> so, sorry, could you just repeat the end of the question? Um, and, and on the consultations, number eight, um, development will uh, increase risk of flooding, but the response is that SUDS is um, due to the nature of the works. Details um, are not necessary in this instance on, on SUDS or water runoff. And I don't understand why it, that is. Um, because this is a shop front application, so it will just have no impact at all. We'll have no impact drainage. at all. Okay. It's, okay. it's that simple. It's just a shop front. Okay, great. So, for, okay, understood. So, um, sorry, if I can just run that on into. Um, um, it also says noted that the development will harm the structural integrity of the building. What's, uh, what was the basis of that? I know I should just reef through my objections again, but... Um, I, I, I think that there are other internal alterations that, that are proposed. I mean, obviously it's proposed to refurbish the ground floor and, and, and the lower ground floor as a restaurant. Right. Um, so they're proposing a number of internal works that thus are not they don't require planning. I mean, is there anything to that? Um. <laughs> I wouldn't want to comment. I mean, the internal works don't require planning permission anyway, so that they're not part of the application. Right. Re replacing the shop front shouldn't yeah. have any impact on the structure of the building. Okay, yes, this is what I'm, this is what I'm, um, uh, this is what I was missing, yes. Is it really is limited to the, because I'm wondering why all these other yeah. things are coming in. I mean, uh, I mean, I understand the, con the concern that people have, but right, it is very much limited to the shop. It's just always, I'm always just wondering, someone's trying to sneak something in somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think a, a lot of the concerns raised in the objections are relating to the, the greater works, the, the conversion works internally. So obviously there are masses to be, be resolved there. Okay, yeah, so the rest is all um, ongoing. Yeah. And they need approval under the building regulations anyway. So we, we are, we are as always, we're, we're, we're working on this application and there yeah. are other issues that have been raised around it legitimately, but they don't relate to this application. Understood. Thank you. Mr. Yeah. Lermas, do you want to comment on the 6.1? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, so having reviewed that application, um, it was, was actually an application for plant equipment um, at number 95 Portobello Road. Um, I think having reviewed the application, I, I do conclude that that's um, a, a, an error in the report and, and members shouldn't take that into account in, in making that decision. Thank you for raising it there. Okay, can we now then go go to a vote please. Uh, it is recommended that the committee grant planning permission with the conditions listed in section 8 of this report. All those in favour raise your hand please. Anybody against? That is carried and that is granted. So that is now moved to flat 197 Addison Road. Derek please. Thank you Chairman. Right, if we can have the, the first slide for uh, Addison Road. Um, so essentially, the, I thought I'd start with a photograph taken from the, um, the, the, the rear window of the basement flat. Um, you'll have seen that the, the, the whole point of the condition um, is all about creating a, a light chute to enable as much light to get down to the, the, the rear um, window to the basement flat as possible. So that, that photograph that you can see there is taken from the, the window in question. 
Um, I'll, I'll show, show you where it is in, in drawings in a minute. But you, you can see there immediately that with the sort of um, one, one window opening into a light well, um, it's obviously paramount that, that as much light can get down that well as, as possible. Um, so there's obviously be, been a bit of history to it. If you can go to the next slide, please. Um, and hence the, the condition has been attached. The slide that I'm showing you there, but basically you, you can see the insection, you can see the light shoot by the, the diagonal, um, which is the, the diagonal line that effectively leads from the rear garden down into the, in, into the light well. Um, the details are essentially that the, the light shoot would be formed as you see it there. There'd be new guttering, um, which would prevent water falling onto the light shoot because one of the concerns was that if they create an angled surface to get light down, well, what happens when water then flows down the angled surface? Um, but with the, the guttering, if you can look... At I hope you can see it then. Um, at the top of the angled slope, you can see that there's a gutter within the garden now. That, that would prevent any runoff from the garden onto the, onto the slope. And then the, the other guttering would prevent runoff from the roofs onto the slope. Some rain would still fall onto the, onto the slope, but at least with the guttering preventing any greater runoff from the garden. Um, the the the, the amount of rain that would literally fall onto it shouldn't be problematic. There's a drain at the bottom as well. Um, so if you could have the next slide, please. And that, that just shows you in, in plan. Um, so you can see in plan form the, the light shoot fenced off at, at the top right-hand corner of the, of the image. Um, and then that shows guttering against the main rear extension. And the next slide, please. And that just shows a closer-up image again of the light shoot and, and then the, the, the light well at the bottom. And that's the last slide, Chairman. Thank you very much. Any questions from members, please? In which case, then, we go to the recommendation, which is the committee approves submitted details uh, for condition two of the application. All those in favour, raise their hands, please. That is carried and granted. Thank you very much. Can we go on then to Avondale Park Primary School? Um, yes, that, so this is the, the last application um, of the evening. Um, basically, that this is before the committee, not because there were objections, but because it's council's own development. So it's outside the scope of our present delegated authority. Um, so as a council application it, it's brought before you. Essentially the first slide there um, shows the, in, the, the outline of the site with the red line. Um, second slide please. And the, the second slide is an aerial image so you, you can see the extent of, of the school buildings. Um, everything in the sort of um, ochre, ochre colour at the centre of the image comprises the school. And next slide, please. Um, so th that photograph just gives you the, the, the flavour of the school. Um, it's obviously a, a, quite a fine Victorian building if you take away the, the fire escape gantry, which perhaps is not so fine. Um, next slide, please. And that's just another photograph. So you can see immediately that there are, there are lots of different window types. Every face of the building basically contains different window types. Um, but the proposal is to re replace all of them. Um, and that's just what one example of, of, a, of a timber double glazed window. Um, so you, you can see the... And then the, the, the next slide, please, um, just shows you a typical section. I mean, that they've, they've actually detailed the windows very well so that they'll be keeping the appearance and the character of, of the existing building um, quite carefully. And then the next slide, please. So uh, I just chose that as, as one detailed image of a proposed replacement. Um, but you can see that even though they're double glazed, that they're keeping the, the existing pattern of the fenestration um, to maintain the character of the building. You go back to the picture of the, the wooden window. 
please. Um, could you go back to the, I think it's one, two, two slides. Yeah, that, that is an example of the, of the windows that will be. That's one of the windows that they're putting in, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Committee, any questions? Uh, Joe, um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a very, very quick one, uh, just being pedantic. Uh, in 3.1, the site relates to Avondale Park Primary School situated on the southern side of Oxford Gardens. Another typo, I presume. Um, <laughs> but just a request if we can... It's, um, given it that quite, quite clearly it, it is at the corner of Mary Place and uh, South Art Road. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's not there, but just uh, that's obviously the second typo that we're, members have picked up tonight. If we can have a bit of a double checking uh, these reports in the future. That would be great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Councillor Idris. Uh, you said some of the windows, not all of the windows are this, uh, are like this? I think I was referring to size. Um, Is it different sizes? Or, I yeah, mean, th there I are so many different sizes. I mean, they, they've submitted about 50 different drawings of different window types. Uh, but all of that quality. But, but, but the yes, quality, the, the, I mean, all the of quality. quality. Yeah. yeah, okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any further questions? Are there any further okay. corrections to the report? Councillor Wigan Smith, have you picked up anything else? In that case, then, can we go to a vote? It is recommended that the committee grant planning permission with the conditions listed in section 8 of this report. All those in favour, raise their hands, please. That's unanimous. That is granted. That um, ends our meeting this evening.